Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Today what I want to do is attempt to test, to taste test, the difference in flavour between the four woods that I prepared a little while back. And to do so, I'm going to be using the forced aging or nuclear aging method using the microwave. Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Basically what that means is this channel does a whole lot of stuff uh, based around things like this. This is UJ SSM and I'm going to be putting the wood in it today, all sorts of stuff like that. So if that's what you're into guys, have a look around and if you dig it, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell and we'll catch you again next time. Like I said at the beginning guys, today what we're going to be doing is using that nuclear aging technique uh, to force age this stuff nice and quick to see if I can get an idea of the different flavours I can get out of these four different types of wood that I've prepared. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you don't know where this wood came from, I'll leave a card up top for that and you can go back and have a look. But basically what I have here is American oak toasted at 220 degrees, 180 degrees, 120 degrees and raw but charred. The liquor that I'm going to be testing it in is this which is my generation number 5 UJSSM. Once again guys if you don't know what this is I'll put a card up top and it'll show you the whole process of making UJSSM. It's a playlist. Alright guys now there is a whole bunch of stuff that I would love to say right now but it gets a little bit boring to go through all the disclaimers at the beginning of the video so you know what I'm going to do today is get stuck right in and I'm going to put the disclaimers at the end of the video. So if you run into something where you think that I screwed up, that you think that I did something silly, so on or so forth, uh, make sure you check the end of the video for the disclaimers. I may have gone over it. If not, make sure you let me know because that's always awesome. In saying that, there's a couple of things that I think would be irresponsible of me to not mention. First of all, we are going to be taking a flammable liquid and sticking it in a heating device. So you need to be prepared. So I've got one of these on hand, which to be honest, probably isn't the best tool for the job if the worst case scenario happens, but it's here anyway. What I do have, which I believe is probably a better option, is one of these, a fire blanket. And honestly guys, I have this and this in my kitchen at all times. If you've seen me cook, you probably understand why I have that. If the house isn't full of smoke, you ain't cooking it right. <laughs> And the second thing I want to mention right off the bat is that yes, I am using plastic lids and the reason that I'm doing that is I could not find four containables that were suitable on every level to do this that were identical if that makes sense. As soon as I am testing them against each other, I wanted everything to be the same. Alright guys, let's get stuck in and get this thing on the road. The first thing that I need to do is proof my UJSSM down to the point that I want to age this stuff at. And I've had a whole lot of internal debate about this. It's taken me a while to decide, but seeing as the name of the game for today is speed, I am going to go with 60%. I had actually forgotten that this UJSSM was actually sitting at 62% already. So you know what, I'm just gonna roll with that and go 62%. So the next thing I want to do is weigh out the wood. And the reason I'm weighing it is because I think at this volume and for this instance, uh, having the same volume between each jar is probably the most accurate way to make sure that they are the same. That the only variable between each jar is the difference in toast, if that makes sense. I've now got pretty much exactly 10 grams of oak in each of these jars and as you can probably see I've got them very well marked. I've marked off at least sort of four times on each jar just in case things start rubbing off. I do not want to be worrying about trying to figure out which jars which later on. <laughs> the next thing that I want to do is get the alcohol in here and the reason I put the wood in first is I want to be able to put the alcohol into each jar at pretty much the same time so one's not you know sitting for 20 minutes longer than the other. Even though I don't think that's going to have a big effect on it I want to once again keep those variables as small as possible between each jar other than the oak. It's probably also worth mentioning right now that this video is really about testing the flavors between the different oaks or the different uh, treatment of the same oak I should say and it is not about trying to make the best product possible. 
I'm not so stressed about the amount of oak to UJSSM, for example. Um, maybe it's too much, maybe it's not enough. That's not really the point. The point is to taste the difference between each jar. Anyway, let's get that UJSSM into those jars. And once again, I'm gonna measure it fairly carefully. You probably noticed that I did 300 mils per jar. Why 300 mils? Well, basically what I wanted to do is find the smallest possible volume that would uh, submerge all of the sticks in all of the jars. And the reason for that is that I don't want to waste a whole lot of product. You know, this may not turn out delicious, plastic lids, all of that. But I wanted it to be the same for each. In any case, now it's time to get them into the microwave and I'm going to microwave all four together space the same distance from the middle of the microwave out so they're kind of like in a ring around the outside once again trying to create as few variables between each jar as possible so there we are they're ready to go i have one minute dialed in on the microwave and the idea is that you want to use short bursts in the microwave to make sure that you don't overshoot the temperature you're aiming for i've seen different temperatures recommended for this process and it's going to kind of depend what you're comfortable with i guess i am going to aim for 60 degrees celsius which is uh help me out guys i'm guessing i don't know like 145 fahrenheit or something like that is that about right <laughs> 145, 150, somewhere around there? I don't know. Sorry, Americans. <laughs> Once again, remember that this stuff is flammable and you're putting it in something that has the potential to make things catch on fire. So be careful. Make sure that there is no metal in there whatsoever. And make sure that you're using microwave safe glass as well. Stuff that isn't going to blow up in the microwave. Because <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> the idea is that you want to blast it for a little bit stop take a temperature reading see what the temperature is like in there and then move forward again inching your way closer to the temperature that you want overall obviously this is going to depend on your specific microwave the volume you're doing and all those sort of things so if in doubt go smaller do like 30 seconds at a time 20 seconds at a time whatever it is you just want to make sure that you're not boiling the crap out of that stuff without knowing it. This has been in there for one minute now, and I have gotten all of about nine degrees. <laughs> so I know that I can, we're only up to 28 degrees right now. I know that I can easily go. So I know that I can easily go for another minute and a half now and not have any problems. Just be aware though that it seems like the time for temperature is not necessarily linear in these things so keep that in mind we're up to 40 degrees now 41 degrees in fact so i'm going to knock this back down to doing little bursts of 30 seconds at a time now to be honest i haven't kept track of the total time that i've microwaved this for and to be honest it doesn't really matter uh, because i don't want to be giving people you know microwave it for three minutes and it'll be good that obviously there's problems with that I'm guessing it's about three minutes so far and right now I am at 58 degrees Celsius now what I am noticing already let me guys let me show you this guys yeah it's not too hot if you can see that you can see that there is some color to this already and what you may also be able to see I don't know if you can see it on camera is tiny little bubbles coming up out of the wood let me put that back in for 20 seconds and first when i saw those bubbles i was a little bit worried like where are they coming from what's going on here uh, is something boiling off and my conclusion is that no it's not what is happening however is that the heat is causing the alcohol somehow because it's not pressure to penetrate into the wood and the air bubbles or the air in the wood is being forced out and uh, bubbling to the surface so close another 15 seconds and i think we're done and those bubbles coming out of the wood are kind of key to this process of nuclear aging but we'll get onto that in a little bit i'll give you a full explanation of what i know we got these jars up to 60 degrees i got the lids on nice and quick and they've been sitting out at room temperature now for about i don't know 20 minutes half an hour something like that and they're only sort of slightly above room temperature. You'll also notice 
that each of the uh, little pop tops on these jars has sucked in. And that indicates that the lids have indeed sealed and we have created somewhat of a lower pressure inside these jars. Why do we do this? The idea is that this nuclear aging technique relies on sort of two things. First of all, basically the alcohol is acting as a solvent. It's stripping things out of the wood and pulling them back into solution or at least suspension back into the liquid itself. So heating that solvent makes it more effective at what it does. Second of all, the pressure changes we're creating force the liquid into the wood and then draw it out of the wood much quicker than that process would take place if it was just at a stable temperature. On that note, what I'm going to do now is pop these guys into the freezer to get them cooled down nice and quick so I can do this whole thing all over again. didn't need to cool these way down but I did want to make sure that there was a pretty big temperature difference between when I sealed the jars up and when I opened them and the idea is that there should be a audible when you open them <laughs> it's got me beat <laughs> anyway let's take these down to Let's take these down to 30% and see what they actually taste like. So there is a little bit of oak in this, but to be honest, and not a whole lot yet. For all of these, I would say that the color is coming through. I mean, look at that. Quite nicely already, but the flavor is not really there yet. And I would like to see if I can get some more flavor out of this because there's not a huge difference between these, to be honest. So I'm going to do another whole cycle, which means whacking these back in the microwave, getting them up to 60 degrees again, sealing them up, letting them cool or forcing them to cool down to... Actually, what did I get these to in the end? I think these are about 10 degrees Celsius. Yeah, okay, so they're at 16 degrees Celsius right now. And my guess is when they came out of the freezer, it would have been about 13 degrees. But it doesn't matter too much because they all had the same thing done to them. So I'm going to whack them back in the microwave. Remember, guys, make sure the lids are off and all that sort of stuff. And do the whole thing all over again. To be honest, I may do it a third time or even a fourth time, depending on what the flavors are like. I think at this point, it's probably best just to catch you when I'm done with this and let you know what the results are. So here's the skinny guys. I ended up doing three heat and cooling cycles in total and it wasn't quite where I wanted it, but I was concerned that doing another fourth cycle would kind of push it over the top to way too much. So what I did is just left it. I just let them sit as they were on the shelf in the cupboard uh, for another two days. So this is two days after I first put this in the microwave. As you can see, the color has come along absolutely wonderfully, uh, especially the charred one has that sort of nice red hue to it now, which I really like. But it is really interesting to see the, uh, the color that you can drum up in the space of two days. That's pretty nuts. Anyway, let's whip the tops off and see what we have. On the nose, these have definitely evolved a fair bit since I last talked to you guys. It's much more of the uh, the actual wood coming through now, the sort of the more woody notes. Smelling them, smelling them straight out of the jar, they are smelling a lot more complex than what I remember it being a couple of days ago. But I think the real test is going to be get these out, uh, cut it down to uh, today. I'm going to aim for forty percent. I don't want to go too high because I want it to be you know really friendly and approachable, so I can sort of really taste it, not just drink it. But I don't want it to be too low either because I want it to be more of a um, a drinking experience, if that makes sense, and not drinking it down at thirty percent. Anyway, let me measure out a nice little portion of each of these and we'll get stuck in. You've probably noticed that one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> I did have five of these little sniff the glasses, but uh, unfortunately, unfortunately I'm a bit of a baboon and I've broken two of them already. It's about time I head back to the op shop, I think, because they're actually they're actually really good little glasses for this sort of stuff. I've got them sitting in order of char, kind of. It's a, a 120, 180, 220, and the raw plus charred at this end, so they're in order of color, I guess, at least. 
So the first thing that jumps out to me straight away is that, forget about the char, because I think that's maybe a little bit different. You've literally got burnt wood with raw wood almost, so I think that's kind of an outlier here. But with these three, in this order, it kind of moves from uh, light and bright and woody through to dark and warming notes down here with this one in between. And I know those aren't flavors, but they seem to be the nicest way to describe it. <laughs> this is sort of more full, more rich, um, raisiny, dark fruit, uh, comforting sort of flavors, I guess. And this is more sort of spring, fruity, but not actually fruity, if that makes sense. Sort of fresh, the freshness of fruit almost. This is the only glass that I can actually smell uh, wood, you know, like just wood in. In some ways, the uh, the charred version is kind of a mix of both of these. But to be honest, I'm finding it a little bit hard to get much off this, and it's probably, to be honest, this glass. Hold on. I'm really disappointed that I didn't have four glasses that are the same for this, but it is what it is, I guess. I'm not getting any smoke off the charcoal one now. Maybe a, just a hint of ash, but more along the lines of sort of caramel. Maybe a little bit of kind of spice. I can taste wood, which is really interesting and makes sense, I guess, because you'd expect the middle of those pieces of uh, oak to be relatively raw still. But I do get a little bit of spice. When I say spice, maybe um, a touch of sort of licorice, uh, licorice, cinnamon and cloves is probably more what it is, actually. Uh, but that is mixed with the oakiness and a hint of sort of caramelliness or something like that as well. I'm not getting a lot of ash or smoke or anything like that on this side, which is uh, interesting to me. And for me personally, I guess a little bit disappointing. But I know objectively that's maybe not the way most people would see that. Um, let's go to this next. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, so compared to this one, it's got much deeper and darker notes, and darker in terms of uh, heading towards dark fruit uh, and dried dark fruit, I guess. Raisins, even like, even a little bit figgy, maybe? Mm, probably not so much, actually. It doesn't have the, um, the spice and the pepper of this one, which is interesting to me. I was hoping to get a little bit of that here. I would describe this as a much more rounded, uh, full-bodied flavor than this, though. Let's go on to the 180. Yeah, okay, so on the nose, this is, now that I've tasted the others and smelt this, let me smell this again too. This has got much more of that, that real uh, kind of sweet appealing, well, sweet and approachable sort of bourbon flavor to it, I guess, that real, mm, I know people describe it as vanilla, but I don't, it's not really vanilla to me. It is kind of, I guess, but more like, more like vanilla essence, not a vanilla pod somewhere between vanilla essence and caramel i guess and then playing with the butterscotch that was there already mm. okay so as you drink it it's much much brighter much brighter sparkly light compared to this anyway more along the lines of uh this is a red wine this is a white wine does that make sense so it's sort of it's more light uh, dances on your tongue <laughs> and it's got those sort of uh, fresh fruit flavors rather than the dried fruit flavors, even though it's not really fruity. Oh my god, I'm not so great at this, am I? <laughs> and I'm expecting this one to be even more like that, but um, actually just let me... But let's try 120. Interesting, okay. All the party happens at the end. When it first goes into your mouth, there's not much going on. A little bit of sweetness, a little bit of bite from the alcohol. But then as you swallow, the oak flavor is much bigger and bolder than anything else on the table. It's more fresh, more woody. It just tastes like tree. Do you know what I mean? Not, not like any of these other flavors that it's morphed into. Hmm. Which makes me think what I should have done for this as well is just done some straight raw oak. Like nothing done to it whatsoever. I think that would have been, that would have been interesting. Uh, even if it wasn't perhaps uh, overly delicious. So there's definitely a continuum going on from here to here in aroma and taste. If this is red wine and this is white wine, this is almost heading towards champagne or something in terms of following that analogy, I guess. it's It feels uh, more dry on the tongue, more light, more crisp, I guess is the word too. Until you swallow and then you get a big burst of oak. 
there is also some vanilla going on in this one and this to me is actually more um, specifically vanilla and I think that's because there's a fair bit of sweetness in it but there's not a lot of other complex things happening um, compared to this and this especially. So I think for me personally this is my favorite. There's no way that you can say that this is better than that to someone else because taste is such a subjective thing. If you're talking about a specific thing on the other hand, uh, how do we get the most oaky flavor into a spirit? Then I have to say that these ones are the bad ones and this is the good one. <laughs> so if you're going to pick something specific, that's a different story. But just overall, it's totally up to you. So the obvious thing to do next, I think guys, is have a little bit of a blend action going on here. And what I, off the bat, am thinking, three parts of the 220, one part of the char and the 180, and two parts of the 120 to boost it up with some oak. But before I get into that, I wanna go, I wanna go through some of those disclaimers that we talked about at the beginning of the video. First up, once again, I know I already said it, even though I said I wouldn't, but yes, yes, I am using these lids. <laughs> I understand that that is a bit of a pain point for the community, and I totally understand why. For those of you that are saying that it doesn't do anything, or that the liquid isn't touching them, so it isn't going to do anything, I definitely think there are strong arguments to be made against that point of view, and I hope to do a demonstration on that sometime soon for the channel. So please guys, if you are going to be doing something like this or you are going to try the nuclear or forced aging, don't think that I'm condoning the use of uh, these caps or plastic caps or anything like that. It's just the way it had to be for this video to keep things similar. Second, yes, I totally understand that this is not really aging. That time and patience is something that has been lost in these jars here. But once again, please guys remember, that's not what this video is about. This video is not about making something that is uh, the most delicious or the best right now. It's not about saying that nuclear or forced aging is as good as traditional aging in a barrel. It's all about me being able to taste the difference between these different chars and then being able to use that information for something in the future when I do decide to age something for two, four years, whatever it might be. Three, yes guys, this can be perceived as a dangerous uh, experiment or a dangerous practice. For those of you that do not wish to be putting a flammable liquid in a microwave, I totally understand it. For those of you that do wish to try something like this, I urge you to be really careful to have a fire precaution around uh, a fire blanket or an extinguisher that's suitable for a liquid fire. And obviously to do your research and to, and to do this carefully. I believe that it's a risk that can be managed to a point where I am accepting of it and happy to do so. I'm not saying that you should. Enough of that. It had to be said or there was going to be chaos in the comments. <laughs> but let's do some blending, eh? All right, so what did I say? I don't even remember what I said before, so I'm just going to make something up again now. I think it was three parts this. I definitely, this is, once again, guys, if it's for me, it's for my own personal fla flavor sort of preferences or whatever, um, then I'm going to be heavy on this because I like that full, deep, dark fruit warming sort of flavor. I dig it, I, and that's just me thinking. I actually did four of those in the end, but hey, sue me. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do from here is do uh, one of the char, just because there is something interesting going on there, but I can't place my finger on exactly what it is I like about it. One from that, uh, one from the 180, and let's go two from the Oki 120. <laughs> Interesting, so on the nose, the thing that comes out the most are the light and sort of fruity side of things, more than the warming and the dark. And the uh, the sweet vanilla, actually. There's more vanilla in this than I smell in anything else. Smell the uh, 220 by itself again. Yeah, it's totally, whoa. That's crazy. So yet again, guys, the thing that we put literally twice as much as anything else in there is probably the least represented by scents, which is bonkers. All right, let's uh, let's try it. Is it? I mean, it's 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 nice. I would say that it smells nicer than any one of these by themselves. So now, when it hits your tongue, you get a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of the dark warming, uh, dark fruit characteristics from this. You get the dancing fresh white winey sort of stuff in the middle, and then as you swallow, you get hit with the oak. Hmm, that's actually that's actually pretty enjoyable. I gotta say. <laughs> 
But I'm not done, I want to make something that's a little bit warmer. So, this time, four of the one that I think I like, and half, not even half, of everything else. This is more what I was expecting. Let's try. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah. Okay, so yes to the flavor profile. Everything I like up until I was expecting the oaky punch to hit me and it didn't. So let's do a little bit more of the, the least. That's better. Okay, so I'm still getting the big dark warming flavors in the middle, but I'm getting enough of the oak to show up at the end to kind of uh, change that flavor and not leave it as being sweet in your mouth. So it makes me want to go back and try more. Let's try it against this blend now that I've gone one of each way. Personally, I have to say that this is kind of more enjoyable for me to drink, but I have to kind of admit that I think this is actually better overall. Okay, this I think has more of a wood profile that I like, but what I haven't talked about is the base spirit that's sitting in behind it. This to me gives me what I want in the wood, but it kind of takes away what's special about the UJ SSM. It sort of masks up, it kind of masks up the butterscotch and the corn and leaves it a little bit flat on that aspect. Whereas this uh, kind of more emphasizes it. Yeah, it does. Okay. Okay, I was wrong. My intuition at the beginning was wrong. And now that I think about that and I've gone back to it, I think I'd even have to say that maybe I would enjoy this more as well. Anyway, team, I feel like I have rabbited on for long enough. <laughs> so, once again, guys, I have to say a huge, huge, huge freaking thank you to the Patreon people that have uh, started contributing to the channel. This is me being speechless. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize for not being around so much in any way, shape or form over the last week. I've been away for work. I apologize for that, especially to the new guys that have reached out to me and I haven't been able to say hi back to you. I apologize for that and I assure you that's not normally my jam. Also, I totally, totally remember that I promised to send a little bit of wood towards a couple of people and I will still do that, guys, I promise. Anyway, guys, if you liked the video, Hit the thumbs up button for me, that would be awesome. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of all of this. It'd be really cool to have your opinion because I learn a buttload from that stuff and everyone else does too. If you really like the video and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do so down below. Ring that bell as well. And I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.